Welcome to chapel. The Lord be with you. We begin with the invocation and the reading. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The reading for today is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. On the day back in January when I realized that I was going to be preaching on Valentine's Day, one of the Yahoo News headlines read, Heidi Klum and Seal call it quits after seven years of marriage. And it made me sad. It made me sad in part because as celebrity marriages go, those two seem to have it together. But even more than that, it was upsetting because that seemed to be one more discouraging breakup in a long line of discouraging celebrity breakups. The, uh, the progression is striking. Heidi Klum and Seal, seven years. Katy Perry and Russell Brand, 14 months. You see where I'm going? Kim Kardashian and Chris Humphreys, 72 days. And it seemed like the media was saying to me, Happy Valentine's Day. Now, I don't claim to have any special insight into these celebrity marriages, and you don't want to be too hard on anybody. But the way our media talks about the engagement and the wedding, and then what seems to be the inevitable breakup, seems to highlight our culture's preoccupation with what seems romantic and elaborate and impressive while overlooking what love really is and what it really takes to make a marriage last. As we celebrate Valentine's Day, we should look at ourselves too, not just celebrities. I think on Valentine's Day we celebrate the natural human desire to feel loved. And romantic, impressive, elaborate events make us feel loved. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, they're fantastic. The proposal that happened at the basketball game last week, good stuff. The only problem comes when we forget what love really is. But it's easy to do. In fact, I almost did it myself recently. In January, a group of us went to Togo, West Africa. Uh, there were five ladies, four men. The five Concordia ladies were all around age 20. And it was fascinating for me to listen to their conversations. There was quite a bit of talk about wedding dresses, the wedding ceremony itself, the reception. There was talk about television shows dedicated to brides and wedding planning. There was at least one bride's magazine floating around. Quite a bit of talk about Will and Kate. I think at one point, one of them said something like this. I pretty much have my wedding planned out. Now all I need is a man. I found this all terribly entertaining until one of them turned to me and said, Papa Mudge, tell us about how you proposed to your wife. And suddenly I felt self-conscious. What if my proposal didn't live up to their expectations? I mean, I didn't propose to my wife Lisa at the top of the Eiffel Tower on New Year's Eve. I didn't have a $12,000 engagement ring lowered from a hot air balloon. I didn't even propose to Lisa on the Jumbotron at halftime at Lambeau Field. 
We were both living in Montreal at the time. We had just attended a wonderful concert. We were walking the streets of the city. And I just turned to her and said, you are everything I could hope for in a wife. Will you marry me? And Lisa said, yes. I finished my story, a little nervous, but the ladies seemed to be satisfied. And I realized that I was the one who was unnecessarily concerned about having an impressive or elaborate proposal. I was the one who was forgetting a little bit about what love really is. And as I thought about it, I realized that although my proposal was not particularly impressive or theologically profound, the wedding that it led to was theologically profound. The pastor who performed our wedding began his sermon like this. He said, we are gathered here today because of Ron and Lisa's baptisms. We were expecting him to say, wedding, marriage, love, but he got it right. Baptisms. Because all Christian love works this way. Before we could do anything to make God love us, before we were in any way lovable, God did love us. And he sent his son Jesus to die in order to save us so that we could have eternal life with him. Our text says it this way, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. There are two main parts here. First of all, God loved us. The love of Christ flowed into us and through us and it flows out of us to others. Second of all, the love of God is a love that is willing to sacrifice. Jesus isn't just an expensive gift. He didn't, didn't just cost God money. He cost God much more. That suffering, that death of his son, Jesus is a great gift that God gave to us, a great sacrifice that he made in his love. And it is this love that flows through us and out of us to others. And it is wonderful to give and to receive this love. It is fantastic to have a coworker who loves you so much that he will do some of your work when you are busy with a sick relative. It's great to have a sibling who will forgive and forget when you behave poorly. It's fantastic to have a spouse who will get up with the baby at three o'clock in the morning. And it's great to have a friend who wants to be with you even when you're angry or frustrated or depressed and not really all that much fun to be with. This is the love of God. I hope that each one of you has a wonderful Valentine's Day. I hope that you do something or say something or give something to someone to make that person feel loved. And I hope someone else does the same to you. At the same time, I hope that each one of us will live out Valentine's Day every day as the love of Christ flows through us and out to others. I said a few minutes ago, that Valentine's Day has a lot to do with the natural human desire to feel loved. Well, let me assure you, you are loved. The God of the universe loved you so much that he sent his son to save you so that he could spend all eternity with you. Happy Valentine's Day. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.